Good afternoon, everyone, or morning, afternoon, early afternoon. Um, thanks for, so much for being here. Welcome to part two of our four part series with Shopify. Uh, part two is driving traffic and I'm Stacey Pitts Caldwell, the Director of Small Business and Central Director for our Illinois SBDC at the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce. And then we have Jaws here who is from Shopify, who is our presenter today. He's gonna go through all of this good information for you. Um, we are going to have time for questions at the end of the presentation this time. We want Jaws to be able to get through the content and then, so if you wanna go ahead and throw your questions into the chat, I will be looking at those. And then once the Q&A begins, I'll ask Josh some of those questions. Um, if you are, if you are, you don't have to use the Q&A function, I believe it's just the chat. So you just copy paste your question right in there. Um, we also have Adrian McFarlane on with us. She is our coordinator for the Illinois SBDC, who is also very familiar with Shopify. So she's she might be answering some of the questions that she's um, that she knows in the meantime. So that is the plan. We we have about an hour today, so we're getting started now. And I just want to welcome you all. Remember, there's two more parts next Thursday and Thursday after. So feel free to. Make sure you have that on your calendar. We always send the unique link out the day before or morning of so that you have that. And then as Yolanda asked earlier, we will be recording this session. And so if you um, if you miss it or have to come in and out, we, you'll definitely be able to get the content. And that will go out um, today or tomorrow at the latest in a post um, webinar email so that you have access to that as well. So let's get started. And I wanna welcome everybody to, uh, to, to the Shopify <laughs> series today. And I wanna welcome Jaz. Jaz, you wanna Thank take you. it over? Yes, please. Thank you so much. I'll All go right. ahead and start sharing my screen so we can get started here. Um, awesome. So you should be able to see my screen now at this point. Um, like I, like, you know, it was mentioned by Adrian and Stacy there. Um, it's important that we, you know, if you have any questions, definitely post them into the the chat functionality uh, within Zoom, and then we will do our best to to answer those uh, towards the end. Um, and yeah, let's so let's dive into it. So today's focus is on driving traffic uh, to your online stores. Um, some of the information we did discuss last time, uh, but for the new for the newcomers um, here. Uh, let's kind of dive into what is Shopify uh, and we'll get started. So we are a cloud-based uh, multi-channel commerce platform, essentially designed to, to help you run your business. Uh, Shopify allows you to design, set up, and manage your stores across multiple sales channels, uh, which includes the web, uh, mobile, uh, social media, marketplaces, uh, brick and mortar locations, as well as pop-ups. Um, so obviously running a business means staying on top of a lot of moving parts and, and Shopify makes this easier for our merchants uh, and our users by providing one mission control uh, for your business. Uh, from your Shopify admin, which is the mission control, you can keep an eye on, uh, on all components of your business. Uh, that includes processing and, and shipping orders, um, your, your staff uh, managing inventory, running ads, and just ensuring things are running smoothly. Um, just at a glance here at Shopify, we cater to business of all sizes, um, whether it's, you know, a side hustle or something that you're, you know, a side project that you're working on, um, up to multi-million dollar corporations. Uh, we have over a million Shopify users uh, in over 175 countries uh, using our platform. Um, Till to date, consumers have purchased over $202 billion worth uh, of product uh, from Shopify stores. Um, we now have over 5,000 employees. Um, when I started off, our support team alone was just about five to 600 people. That's now grown up to about 4,000. So we are growing at a significant rate. Um, here's just a quick snapshot of some of the brands that you'll find on Shopify. You'll probably recognize a few of these and maybe even shop with them your, yourselves. Uh, just a quick synopsis of how Shopify was created. 
Um, the Shopify started in 2004, uh, kind of by mistake. Uh, Toby and his friends, so Toby Lutke is our CEO, and his friends were, were trying to sell snowboards online. Uh, they were frustrated that the, uh, with the e-commerce options that were out there and decided instead to build their own solution. Um, they realized that what they had built could not only help other entrepreneurs um, and themselves, so they decided to stop selling their own snowboards um, and to continue to build what became Shopify. Um, our straightforward mission is to make commerce better for everyone. So whether that's uh, you're a store owner, uh, whether you're a consumer, uh, a partner like Chicago Land, um, literally anyone. But you know, for for dreamers to large corporations, Shopify can power it. Um, our goal is to help you succeed, and when you succeed, we also succeed as well. Um, this this image I like to to always mention is actually from our Shopify headquarters here in Ottawa, Canada, uh, as a constant reminder of what we're here for. So just a quick look at what we'll be covering. Um, we're going to talk about marketing, some marketing essentials. Um, we'll talk about a little bit about organic marketing um, and some, you know, some strategies uh, and then get into discussing some paid marketing and some popular platforms uh, that you can use. So this is kind of a new um, new kind of slideshow that we've created. So let's get dive into it right away. Um, so let's talk about marketing essentials for, uh, at first. Uh, before you jump into anything, it's important that you take some time and establish uh, your brand's identities. That's similar to what we kind of discussed in our part one series uh, last week. So your brand identity is going to be made up of a few key, uh, key ingredients. Um, so that's going to include knowing your target audience, um, having a unique selling proposition, um, having some great photography and graphics, uh, and then obviously killer copywriting. So that's going to be, you know, your product descriptions, uh, your titles and emails. We did discuss these last week, but I did want to quickly go over them as well. So probably the most important uh, piece of the puzzle is identifying your target audience. Uh, especially when it comes to marketing and driving traffic. Um, so this is a play, uh, it's basically a piece many people skip, um, but it really does leave a big hole in your puzzle. So if you don't know who you're marketing to, everything will be, you know, definitely more costly and definitely more time consuming. So take a moment and think about which group is being affected by the problem that you're looking to solve. Essentially, you want to try identifying the ideal customer and adapt your language, um, speaking to them in a way that they would understand. Um, an example I like to use is you don't want to use, you know, you don't want to talk to an 18 year old the same way you would, you know, talk to a 40 year or 60 year old, even though they both be uh, in your target audience. Uh, here's an example um, that demonstrates the, the target audience for MVMT's store. Um, your, your target audience will dictate your, your lifestyle photography, as well as, you know, the voice across all those mediums throughout your site. Um, and it's important to remember here that consistency and reliability are key. Next up, you have a unique selling proposition, or USP for short. Um, our USP is, it's basically a statement that shows how you solve your customer's needs. Um, and what distinguishes you from the competition. So it's here where you can highlight what you do better than anyone else, uh, whether it's the price, uh, the materials that you use, or maybe it's the social impact that you're having. What do you do better than your competition? And this is going to be a key component throughout this entire series. Um, here we have an example from uh, a store called Warby Parker. Uh, where they have a buy, buy a pair, give a pair. So their USP is all about social impact when you purchase from them. Um, so that's something that, you know, a tactic that you can also use in your stores. Um, next, let's talk about photography. So good photography is going to be an integral part of your brand. So, so come some common themes um, in great photography are going to be things like having high quality, clear images, uh, showcasing and highlighting unique details, uh, for instance, showing a variety of angles of a, of a particular product, um, 
having a neutral background like white or gray is going to make the product image pop out a lot, a lot stronger. Uh, and then lastly, providing lifestyle shots uh, to show your product in action. Uh, photography can, can be just as important as the message or, or product itself. So if you take a look at this, this store right here, MBMT, um, they have like, awesome lifestyle and pro product photography, um, and they each serve their purpose. So lifestyle photography is going to help build the emotional connection. Uh, the product photography is going to help validate uh, the purchase decision. Uh, alongside their minimal logo, it's going to provide some great visual branding. Uh, moving into what it is, um, copywriting specifically. Copywriting is the act of strategically writing text that persuades people to take some form of action. Uh, Well-written copywriting is essential because it's going to drive profitability and achieves your business's goals by convincing your target customer that your product offering will, will solve their need and offer them value. It's also a part of building trust in your brand, uh, a key thing these days. So some examples of this is going to be your product titles, your descriptions, uh, promotional emails. Uh, we'll talk about meta titles and meta descriptions um, and how you add those in, in your Shopify store. And then we'll get into, you know, the, the Facebook advertising and Google advertising and so on and so forth. Um, here's a great example from Jing Shark. Um, if you take a look at the title itself, um, which I'll show in, a, in, a, in another slide, it's a vital seamless uh, quarter zip pullover. You'll also notice how seamless they, they you know, they, they built work in putting keywords like slim fit, uh, dry technology, and a quarter zip to, to center of the neck into the description. Um, although this looks like some, uh, you know, self-explanatory, learning to, to write this will, will take some practice and work. Uh, but it is definitely worth uh, worthwhile doing. Uh, and again, this will help drive more qualified traffic and conversions uh, than poor copywriting will. So what is organic marketing? Um, it's the act of getting your customers to come to you naturally rather than through paid advertising. Um, so let's take a look at some, some of the main tactics that you can use for organic mar marketing. Um, so there are typically four main areas of organic marketing uh, that we're going to talk about. So we have SEO, uh, we have content marketing, social media marketing, as well as email marketing. So let's take a look at each of these in a little bit more depth and talk about some strategies. So let's start off with SEO. So what is SEO? So obviously it's something that you guys have commonly heard. Um, it's what we need to, to get a rank in search engines simply. So we want our business um, and products or services to show up as close to the top of the search engine pages as possible to ensure potential visitors uh, can find us easily through the, through, through the use of keywords or phrases. Uh, the emphasis is on maximizing visitors and appearing high, the highest possible way on, on those search engines. So let's dive into some of the tactics we can use to, to help achieve this. Um, Google will use um, over 200 factors to rank your website, uh, but most of these are unknown to the general public. Um, however, these things are there are things that Google will has had already that you'll want to focus on. So uh, to kind of go through the most common ones quickly, um, their product titles, make sure they're, that they're clear and concise. Uh, the product descriptions, uh, make sure that they're detailed and ensure trust. Uh, your meta title and meta descriptions, essentially those are keywords that appear in search queries um, that people enter into search engines. So for example, a person might search, let's just say blue shoes in Canada. Uh, the key word in, in the search would be blue shoes and Canada. So to, to make your, your, your store appear higher in search engines, you should try to find out which keywords your customers might use to find your products and add those keywords into your content. URLs, for example, uh, make, sure, um, you know, make sure your URLs are simple and descriptive. Uh, the handles themselves can be changed 
uh, within the Shopify platform. Um, alt text. So that's basically adding alternative text to photos. Uh, it, it's the first and foremost uh, a principle of web accessibility. Um, a lot of time visually impaired users using screen readers uh, will use, uh, will, will read an alt attribute to, to better understand um, an on-page image. Um, and then lastly, we have product reviews. It's a strategy that's used commonly to increase SEO rankings uh, to include reviews of your product. Uh, the, the, the more reviews, the more likely the search engines will give it a higher ranking. Um, now, it's important to, to kind of note that this is, again, going to take some time. It's not going to be something that hope happens overnight. Um, so first, we need to give uh, a product a, re a relevant title. Uh, in this case, it's called a vital seamless quarter zip pullover. Um, a very, you know, relevant keyword for this product um, that's going to help dr or drive organic traffic uh, to your website. So it's important that your titles aren't too long uh, and it actually says what the product or service is. Uh, we already saw the, the product description for this product earlier, so it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, the alt text, uh, or it's basically again used a part of the HTML code on the site to, to provide descriptions of the image. Um, the primary purpose of the uh, is for again the accessibility for, for visitors using screen readers, uh, but also serves to show what you know somebody may be missing if the image doesn't load. Um, in this case, it's the title of the product uh, that pretty much tells you what it is plus the color itself, in this case, teal. Continuing with this uh, example from Gymshark, um, here's an example of the meta, meta title and meta description. So both the meta, meta title and description should differ from the title and the description we saw before. Uh, this is because it serves a different pur purpose. Um, as I mentioned earlier, what appears on the product page isn't meant to entice a sale. Um, where the meta information is displayed in the search results and is meant to entice a click through the website. So sometimes companies will leave the description and, uh, and the, uh, the meta description the same uh, as Gymshark did here. But for smaller brands especially, the more you can target this to your customers, the better it's going to be. Um, if not optimized for your audience, um, you can end up with lower click through results and you really want to, to, you know, you want people to click through your, on your results and not your competitors. So this goes really back to understanding who your target audience is. This is basically just like a high level overview on how search, uh, search engines typically work. Uh, for, for more in-depth details, um, there's a really great video by Google on YouTube. It's called How Google Search Works, uh, How Google Searches Work. Um, I would take that, take a look at that. It's about a five minute video uh, that really goes over through this process in a little bit more depth. Uh, so the Google bot, also known as the crawler or spider, um, makes its way around the internet. And basically what it does is that crawling through the different pages um, and analyzing the content, it stores the most relevant information uh, in its essentially database. Um, and this process is, knows, and is known as indexing. Um, and sometimes, you know, something to keep in mind is that Google will never index all of your pages, just the one it needs to make the informed decisions. Um, next, the end user, which is gonna be us, that searches for something on Google, that search or query uh, goes through an index to find the most relevant pages based on what was searched and then presents a page of results for us to, uh, to review. Um, that's known as SERP or search engine result pages. Um, and of course, it's more complicated than that, but just, just let's you know, take a look uh, of what it looks like when it's done right. And when everything is done right, you, you see better rankings uh, for your search terms. Um, here we have a store called Allbirds. Uh, they do this in this example. You'll notice that they have an ad right above their search results. So their SEO and marketing are, are obviously done quite well. Um, you know, again, the, the most important thing is, again, it, SEO does take time and effort. It's not going to happen overnight. 
Um, and it, it might be, you know, a little hard to, to take the top spots from the big companies or smaller companies that have been around for a while, but these small strategies and things that you can think about will definitely help uh, increase your, your, you know, your ranking. Let's talk about social media. So obviously social media is great for, for building brand awareness uh, and engaging in your audience. Uh, it helps build a community around your business and, and as, as well as establishing authority and uh, industry expertise. So some main tactics here uh, include sharing, you know, engaging in content uh, that will resonate with your audience. Don't just share products, you know, think about other things that you can also share with them. Um, maybe offer product giveaways uh, or maybe partner with an influencer. Um, here's an example of Allbirds that I mentioned before. Um, they use, you know, in their bio of their Instagram page, they enforce their, their USP or their unique selling proposition. Um, they say at Allbirds, we make the, word, uh, the world's most comfortable shoes for life's everyday adventures. Um, with this giveaway example from, from MVMT, uh, you'll notice that they've created a few calls to action uh, that you must do before you, you, you know, you're entered. Um, you get to, to follow them first, uh, which increases the number of followers that they have. Uh, then they get you to tag two friends, which means more engagement and more awareness uh, for your brand uh, and the contest as well. And then lastly, they get you to click their link and give them your email for early access ensuring that you're continuing to engage um, with you with you know, emails going forward. Um, and this type of offer can drive a lot of engagement over a short period of time. Now we can get into email marketing. Uh, there are still many people who will tell you email marketing is dead, um, but if 20% of your sales are not coming from email marketing, it's possible that you may be missing out. Um, email is definitely a, a very valuable channel um, because you, you own that list. Nobody else controls it but yourself. Uh, once you have a solid list build up, you can then take advantage of segmentation or automation features to create the most effective um, email campaigns. And you can do that directly within your Shopify account. Um, so let's talk about some of the emails we can send as well as strategies for marketing to, to how to measure your successes. So some of the main tactics um, for a quality email strategy will include, for example, a welcome series. Um, so for new signups uh, to your email marketing, offer some sort of incentive like um, a, a welcome discount. Uh, then we have product launches, whether it's a new release of a product or potentially a new line of products you're bringing in. Let's talk, you know, you can always throw that into an email format. Uh, abandoned checkouts are, are a common uh, email notification. Setting up an automated email to entice those uh, abandoned, uh, abandoned carts uh, to return and, and then obviously make a, a purchase again. And then finally, we have newsletters, which are probably the most common. And that's keeping your customers up to date with any kind of sales new launches, anything coming down the line, or maybe there's some notifications or notices that you want them to be aware of. Uh, really the, the importance here is to stay relevant. So a few uh, important things we need to discuss before diving in is um, a marketer, Seth Godin, he talks about uh, email um, as a permission-based marketing. So Subscribers give you the, the permission to email them, right? And you reward that permission by providing content that is personal and also relevant. Um, the goal of every email you send should be to add value to the recipient. And when you add value, you obviously get value out of it. Ultimately in this form of revenue or, or customer advocates. Um, and remember when it comes to email, it's quality over quantity. Um, as our inboxes obviously get fulled pretty quickly these days. Um, email legislation is the, the rules and regulations that govern how, um, what, and whom you're able to email. Uh, it's hugely important to, to comply to these regulations to avoid um, some serious penalties. A big thing to remember is that if you have customers 
in any of those areas mentioned, you, you must still comply with those regulations, uh, even if you're not based there. Uh, the legislation here is to protect consumers, um, not the businesses themselves. So it might be worthwhile looking into, you know, speaking to a lawyer, maybe your local business bureau to figure out what those specific laws might be. Uh, so now we can let's, you know, chat about the best practices when it comes to those emails. Um, please note that, you know, this should be considered, this should not be considered as legal advice. Uh, but if you're unsure, you know, with what to comply with, obviously, again, speak to, to your lawyer uh, or a, the, your local business bureau for additional assistance with this. Uh, otherwise, here's some uh, best practices you can utilize. Um, identify the message as an ad if it is one. Um, you can do so easily uh, by including this email is an advertisement on behalf of your company's name or something similar at the bottom of the email. Um, tell your recipients where you're located. Um, you should include, you know, a full physical address at the at the footer of your email as well. Um, ensure uh, your your in, um, sorry uns uh, your unsubscribe uh, button is clear and easy to find. Don't make it a hassle to opt out. Um, click, so sorry, uh, honor any of those opt out requests immediately. Most apps, um, if you are using an app for this, uh, will have this feature automatically. Uh, and lastly, monitor what others are doing on your behalf. This means if you're, you know, if you're about to fire out an email marketing down the line, you are legally liable here. Following up on that, um, here are some practices to avoid. So don't use false or misleading um, header information. This means you're not masking or misleading uh, who the email is coming from in an effort to increase open rates. Um, in, the, in the same kind of vein, don't use deceptive um, subject lines. Never purchase uh, lists or contacts from third parties. These people do not give you explicit permission to email them. Um, and then lastly, don't, you know, pad your, your, your mailing list. Uh, people may not opt out or unsubscribe from your list, but never open, you know, your, your, your emails too much. Bigger subscription numbers don't equal better because the impact it will have on your open rate. You should, you know, make sure you, you audit your lists over time. Um, so, you know, people who are no longer engaging are, you know, not included within those emails. So before you can start sending marketing emails, you'll need to grow your email list itself. Um, there is a section in, in each Shopify store where you can have customers leave their information and opt into email marketing. So one of the most popular ways um, to, to essentially grow an email list is through the use of pop-ups. And while many people hate pop-ups, marketers have tested them extensively. Um, and when done right, they can greatly increase uh, the opt-in rate for new subscribers. Um, so let's talk about making those pop-ups a little bit better. Uh, so first, what you should do is you should never trigger a pop-up as soon as somebody lands onto your website. Unless it's an emergency message of some sort, uh, you should typically do it you know, after a specific amount of time. So let's just say 60 seconds. Um, after they scrolled um, a certain percentage of the, the page, let's say, say, uh, 50% or maybe um, via an exit intent. So if the customer is looking like they might be leaving, then it's triggered right then and there. So doing pop-ups immediately or that pop-up every time somebody changes a page will lead to less signups uh, and more people leaving your page, which will essentially won't benefit you. So you find that timing that works best and you don't need to do this very often, but often enough. Uh, in terms of things to include in your pop-up, um, make sure that you know your your marketing is a your marketing copy is a short, uh, and, and and the brand is for you, right? So attract attention by showcasing your product and sharing a fun uh, you know a fun on brand image, uh, and include a clear concise call to action. So that might be you know sign up here to receive X amount off on your next purchase. And next, we can talk about abandoned carts. Um, let's think about the potential, you know, customer's journey to your store. Um, they found your website, which means, you know, your, your top funnel marketing 
um, is working. They took some time to look around your, your store, find a product they were interested in, and then put the product into their cart. Um, then they left without making a purchase. It's obviously frustrating because you don't know why. Um, 60 to 80% of online shopping carts will be abandoned. Um, but you can mitigate that frustration uh, with an abandoned cart strategy. So companies can sometimes recover between five and 11% of abandoned carts sales by doing this. So if you're just starting out, uh, we would typically recommend sending one abandoned cart email as soon as you can after the cart was abandoned. Uh, the more recent your email, the higher likelihood you will re-engage with that customer. And the key here is to create a sort of uh, urgency, ideally without nagging them. Um, make sure your subject line is catchy, remind the potential customer about the value of the product and include an image. Um, you can also consider incentivizing the customer uh, to buy now by offering a discount code or uh, free shipping. Remember this, you know, this type of discounting won't work for everybody. So think of how it could affect your business in the long term. Uh, needless to say, you know, COVID has changed how businesses operated. Um, in the next portion, we'll just briefly touch about, you know, some best practices for communicating that uh, with your customers during this time. So if like many others, your business has been highly, highly impacted and, and you had to alter the, you know, its normal flow, it, it's okay to communicate that. Uh, a good example of how to communicate that would be letting your engaged subscribers know maybe you're temporarily closing uh, one of your locations or maybe um, all of your locations. Additional methods, um, you know, you're, you're going to be introducing to protect consumers and employees. Don't forget to mention, you know, any wage and, and, and benefit program uh, that, you, that you might be offering. And adding, you know, kind of notes, letting people know that they're experiencing delays uh, due to the supply chain, maybe it's shipping, it's important to include. So ensure that you're being empathetic with your tone and your language. Don't use discounts or promotional codes uh, involving COVID. It's just in bad taste. Uh, be your authentic self, just as you normally would. Don't change, you know, who you are in this sense. Um, now it's really like the, the time to double down on your customer satisf uh, satisfaction and service. So be sure you're sending up a follow-up follow email after, after a sale maybe, asking for the purchasers to rate their product or experience or to leave a product review. Essentially ensure that your customers are being responded to in a timely manner, even if it's just getting to know, you know you're, you're really backed up and maybe you know, you'll respond within a day or two. Uh, remar remember that you have other marketing channels you can communicate through as well. So make sure, you know, to share those messaging things uh, on your Facebook page or maybe on your Instagram feed to let people know that, you know, what the, the same information that you would be included within your emails as well. And I'm sure, you know, many of you have received emails from, from companies that have provided your, you know, email um, and, you know, some, some sort of stance on COVID-19 and what they're doing. This is a great example of companies not essentially utilizing, um, you know, their, their time in cleaning up their lists and engaging with old subscribers uh, or inactive subscribers. Um, as the end user, it can get quite of annoying, making it more uh, likely that someone will ignore your email uh, and unsubscribe and mark it as spam. A great uh, alternative uh, to this would be to improve an, uh, on an update on a section of your website uh, if you're being heavily impacted and, and indicating any shifts in things like shipping delays uh, or transactional emails um, like the order notification. It's usually tempting to try and drive sales if your business is struggling. So, you know, by increasing the number of marketing emails, you send is not really a good way to do this. You should strive for the 80-20 rule where you're, where you're focusing on delivering uh, value 80% of the time and promotional content 20% of the time. Um, and again, calling you know, back to our earlier slide, it's important to um, really focus on over service for your customers 
and again, it's important that you don't, you know, be afraid to change or tweak your, your, your marketing strategies at this time. And finally, you want to make sure that you measure the success of your efforts. So there are four fundamental metrics uh, I recommend uh, you track to test if your email marketing is working. Um, so open rates, um, click-through rates, unsubscribe rates, and lastly, revenue. So we can go through each of those uh, a bit quickly here. So open rates, um, an open rate is a percentage that tells you how many emails were opened by a subscriber. Um, the, the, the standard for a good open rate is about 15 to 30%. Um, a click-through rate, um, it's essentially a percentage that tells you how many of those um, opens generated at least one click. Um, the, the kind of general percentage is about 5% that you want to go for. Um, unsubscribe rate is the number of people who unsubscribe from your mailing list divided by the number of people uh, that received your, your email. And then lastly, your revenue. It's of course how much money is coming in the door. Um, according to some marketing experts, um, super successful brands get about 20 to 30% of their total revenue from an email marketing strategy. So content is the uh, creation and sharing of material like videos and blogs. Uh, that doesn't uh, explicitly promote uh, a brand or product, but it is intended to stimulate interest in a brand or a product. So we can quickly take a look at some great content marketing. Um, again, using MVMT, they drive a lot of engagement by sharing lifestyle videos on their YouTube channel. Um, and this one, you know, in particular was, is with, with uh, influencer Sam Calder. So the video isn't talking about the brand or their products, but it still helps raise awareness um, of their brand within their, their, their target audience. Um, they do something similar on their blog page. Uh, while you might see a, a bit more content focusing on the brand or the products here, uh, you'll see a lot of variation of content. Um, blog posts are great because, uh, you know, the, the use of keywords will essentially help prevent, or sorry, help drive traffic uh, to your website uh, for, for, you know, future searches. Um, remember when it comes to blogging, again, it's quality, not quantity that matters but you still need to be consistent with it. So if you start out, you know, going hard with content, then all of a sudden stop. Uh, this looks bad, not only to Google, but your, cons uh, your, your customers as well. So if you're not, you know, if you're going to blog, figure out, you know, what you can accomplish and don't be afraid to start off small um, because it's easier to scale up than it is to scale down with your content. So don't overwhelm yourself. Um, so moving on to paid advertising, we'll cover um, a briefly steps to take before you, 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 know, uh, you, you pay for advertising and some popular platforms. Um, so as with organic marketing, you really want to make sure you know this, you, you know, your story, your, your, your audience, uh, advertising without a clear and concise understanding of who you're going to be marketing to will result in higher costs and a lower return on investment. So, you know, before spending any money on advertising, think about where you want your business to be two weeks from now, maybe six months from now, or even four years from now. It's important to have a clear idea of, you know, how you, or why you're spending your money on advertising and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, remember that not all advertising is for conversions. Uh, you really want to create advertising that works for you at all stages of the, the, the marketing funnel. Uh, remember to budget for your advertising as well. So here's a few things to keep in mind with, with paid advertising specifically. Um, the money you spent on advertising is, is an investment. You know, your, your, invest, your, your advertising budget uh, will change year over year or even month over month. Uh, your, your budget doesn't need to spread evenly across platforms. Um, and try to consider when your customer wants to buy, not just when you want to sell. So an example would be, for example, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, maybe focusing a little bit more on the, the, the holiday seasons. And then content is an important part of your, your advertising and organic marketing. Um, having high quality and consistent material is essential. 
uh, depending on the time of year, you will promote, you know, different collections, maybe different product or collect uh, or content. Um, your strategy will um, change based on product releases, selling seasons, or maybe discounted timeframes. Uh, do your best to, to plan for events. Again, whether it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or maybe it's Mother's Day, plan campaigns that'll tell a story rather than the product itself. So a content calendar will help, you know, mark and make your, your paid and organic uh, advertising goals a little bit more manageable. So we can take a look at some of those platforms. Um, so obviously the, probably the most commonly used Facebook has been, you know, an, an essential business tool for, for many businesses and offers a variety of ad types to reach your, your different audiences. Um, by advertising on Facebook, you will be able to reach potential consumers um, with content that encourages engagement, which helps raise visibility and consideration of your brand and products. Um, with Instagram's focus, it's more on visual content combined with the ease of use. So the, the platform itself creates a vortex through which uh, viewers can be drawn into your content uh, over and over again. Uh, there was, I believe, 1 billion monthly uh, Instagram users uh, in June of 2018, uh, which is even probably higher now, given that, uh, you know, it's more, a lot more accessible. Um, with both Instagram and Facebook, you have, you know, amazing capabilities to target specific groups of people, um, you know, and, and target those different types of audiences. And then lastly, we, we've all seen Google ads. Uh, we've seen, you know, the text ads in search results and, and Gmail for, for, for several years now. Uh, we're now getting used to seeing Google shopping ads too. These are the ones that display the product image for you. Um, what you may not know is Google networks um, go, go far beyond Google properties. And, and when you're running those ads, you can choose to do so on uh, the display network, which is a group of millions of websites, videos, and apps where your ads can appear. So display networks typically reach about over 90% of the internet users worldwide, uh, depending on obviously the, the website that it's on. Um, and it's, it's, it's super uh, display networks specifically are useful for remarketing uh, to your to your visitors because it use uh, uh, it's used across multiple uh, websites um, and gives you uh, the opportunity to give back in front of the customers outside of the the basic uh, Google properties. So think about some things that you kind of want to take away um, from this presentation. Again, I did want to showcase these these helpful resources that we've used in the past before. Um, our help center is going to have a lot of the kind of no, you know, the the step by step instructions on how you can achieve some of these uh, functionalities within your Shopify admin. Um, the app store is mainly for for additional apps that can be used uh, specific for SEO. So if you go to our app store and type in SEO, you'll see different types of uh, apps available there. Um, Shopify compass is probably my favorite tool. There's videos specifically um, there for SEO and marketing, and, and they discuss some, some great strategies as well. So definitely take your time to go through some of these resources, um, and, and we can definitely help you out as well. Lastly, our support system is always here. Our support teams are available 24 seven. Um, should there be any kind of questions or concerns beyond what, you know, what you might find on those resources. Alrighty. Well, thanks, Jazz. I'm going to um, kick off some questions. We have a few questions. Um, let me just pull my sure. notes up. Okay. So we had a question when you were talking earlier. So one question is, if I have a Shopify website, can I integrate it into Facebook so that I can sell my products there as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the there is a specific Facebook channel um, that will allow you to simply um, connect your 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 Facebook business page um, directly to um, the your, your your Shopify store. Um, there are certain requirements that you have to to meet in order to to be eligible, uh, but you do have that ability. Okay. 
And then the other, someone uh, direct messaged me a, a question about Facebook Pixel. Um, how does it work with your shop with their Shopify website? Sure. So our, our support advisors will will definitely have a little bit more context into how Facebook Pixel works. Uh, but essentially, it's a tool that will allow you to monitor um, how your Facebook ads are running. So, for example, um, when you when you set up a, a, a business Facebook business page, um, you'll be given a Facebook Pixel that you can integrate within your Shopify store, um, which will then generate some statistics uh, to let you know how those uh, different pixels are running. There are within your theme, for example, you'll be able to insert the, the, the pixel as well. So it automatically connects your, um, your, your Facebook pixel directly into your Shopify store. Okay. And then a current Shopify user asked, it's not said, it's not clear how to add the pop-up add-ons into our stores and which ones are good. How do owners select these and what are they called? Sure. So um, if you go to our theme store and our app store, those will probably be your, your kind of best two, two ways. The app store, uh, some of the themes I should start off with saying is uh, they, they have these features built in. So it really just depends on the specific theme that you're using. Now, it's possible that your specific theme doesn't um, have that feature built in. So you may need the addition uh, of an app. Um, and since they are a Shopify user, um, if you're using a Shopify theme, you have 60 minutes of design time. Um, so it might be worthwhile talking to our support advisors and maybe having the, the support team adding a, a pop-up for you. Um, if they're not able to add that for you, then you can take a look at some apps uh, within our app store. I don't know any off the top of my head. I would have to take a look into the actual app store myself. Uh, but definitely uh, take a look into that and talk to our support advisors. All right. And then the other question is, how can a store increase click-through rates and revenue rates? Click rate, again, uh, that's a really great question. I wish I had like a, a, a one kind of sentence that will, will kind of give you that answer. Uh, it's going to be a combination of several different things that, we're, that we kind of discussed today. Um, if, if, for example, you know, I would be interested in knowing, you know, what your, your current conversion rates are um, and what type of advertising you're running. Um, and then we can kind of dig a little bit deeper into that and figure out what would probably be the best strategy to use. Um, but yeah, I, it, it really, it, it is always like, a, it's, it's an interesting one because it definitely uh, is going to vary store to store. And there's probably not really one exact answer, unfortunately, that will help answer that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then I'm going to, so I see Tamika has her hand up. So Tamika, you just want to ask your question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had asked the question about the click-through rates and things. So um, my conversion rates are pretty good from what I understand as far as the industry. I'm a bookseller, I, I, okay. I'm a bookstore. Um, and so the themes don't fully align, you know, with bookstores. Um, okay. So we, we've had to do a lot of, of different things, but my, my online store conversion rate is 3%. Okay. Um, and I've, I've heard that's good, I've heard that's bad, I don't know. <laughs> um, my returning, customer rate is about 25%. Wow, that's really um, good. And so I'm hearing that's great, right? But when I look at the number of people in terms of like my visitors versus people who are purchasing, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's disheartening. Like I'll have, I could have a couple hundred people in my site in a week okay. and not sell anything. Right? Gotcha. Um, my newsletters, I've been using an app through Shopify with Seguno. Okay, yeah. Um, for newsletters. And I mostly, you know, quality over quantity, right? So I do a weekly newsletter of new book releases. Okay. Okay. Um, my click through rates are like 1%, 2%. Okay. Um, nobody buys anything <laughs> from right. those newsletters. So I'm finding that the work I'm doing is driving people to my store, right? I've got people coming. I've got people browsing. 
Um, I can see, I'm, I'm a big, as you can't tell, I look at my analytics a lot. Yeah. Um, but the concern is they're coming, but they're not buying. Right. And so what, what, do, what do you recommend for stores who have really great rates of people totally. coming, but no one's buying? Sure, that's a really great question. And I think that that is a common concern amongst kind of newcomers onto the platform. And Tamika, if I can, I can ask you, um, do you, do you know what your abandoned cart rates are typically like right now? Like, are you noticing people are actually putting their, you know, products into their carts or are they kind of just abandoning kind of no. visiting your website and not really getting that far? Yeah, they don't get that far. <laughs> um, gotcha. I don't have a really big abandoning cart rate. Uh, and the people, funny thing about it is people who abandon carts, I have a message that comes right away, right? Okay. Um, when they abandon cart, they email me and they tell me why. Right. I'm really trying to decide, you know, between these or that, can you give me some information for this age group, right? right. So I've added some product details to each book's page um, that will give them the target age range. So I'm trying to address some of the questions that people have messengered me about or emailed me about right. when they're, they're trying. So the abandoned cart rate isn't that, isn't that big. I don't have a lot of issues. Gotcha. And the reason why I asked that is just because it kind of helps kind of narrow down where the, the quote unquote issue is uh, within the, the sales funnel, right? Like mm -hmm. if, for example, we were figuring out, okay, they're, they're abandoning checkouts. I would say, let's take a look at your shipping rates, right? Like, you know, maybe the shipping rates are too high. Um, I, in, our, in, in the initial kind of study um, that we did, uh, we had a, uh, our Shopify team do a little study on this uh, earlier last year. Uh, they found that 56% of people were abandoning carts due to high shipping rates. So in this particular case, there's obviously something else going on. Um, have you spoken to our support advisors yet specifically? No, I didn't know I get 60 minutes free. So that's nice. Um, yeah. So our support team is definitely there to, to help you out as far as mm -hmm. like, you know, like it's not 60 minutes free for, for this kind of consultation. Like this is all, oh, okay. you know, stuff that we're here to help you with the okay. 60 minutes are specific to, um, theme development. So if you have a Shopify theme, you actually mm -hmm. receive 60 minutes of design time. There are specific restrictions of, um, you know, what you can essentially have done within the 60 minutes. Uh, but for example, if you wanted to add a pop-up um, or maybe, you, you know, if your theme already has a pop-up, you have some additional time to help maybe customize that. And the, the, okay. our support team will have a, a little bit more kind of insight into as to what our theme developers are able to kind of adjust for you. But definitely get in touch with them specifically because they'll be able to take a look at those analytics with you and kind of figure oh, out, okay. you know, what strategies might be the, the best ones for you. Great, thank you, Jazz. You're welcome. And and Jazz, I know we're we've got about five minutes left, so I just wanted to, um, Tanya, are you there? Can you can you mention to Jazz your your statement or your question? Let's see if she's there. If not, I can go ahead and read it. But um, so Tanya had a more of a statement. She sure. is a current Shopify user. Okay. And she asked, will we be digging into how to optimize Shopify services for those of us who are already running a store, a walkthrough of the admin dashboard, facts, you know, FAQs, or a discussion of how to use apps that might help advance the advanced user scale. Um, she also mentioned, you know, if, if there's an opportunity to like see you set up a store, maybe a basic one, you know, online. And so I just wanted you to ad address that. Yeah. So um, as a part of like our four part series, we typically won't have time to kind of go into the, the kind of step by step. Uh, but if that's something that, you know, is in demand, um, Stacey, maybe we can chat a little bit later and figuring out, you know, maybe we can set up a session where we can actually kind of go through those specific requirements. Um, um, we have like an empower uh, coaches session uh, that we offered that I think we mentioned to you earlier. Uh, where we, we do discuss and kind of go through, it's a full day of kind of going through uh, a Shopify admin and going through different aspects of your store. Uh, but again, our support advisors, if you have specific questions to your specific store, um, our support advisors are definitely um, going to be the, 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 the best options because they'll be able to specif uh, you know, specify what's best for your specific needs. Okay. Yeah. So I, we got another person said, so yes, it's in demand. So let's, awesome. um, you and I, 
talk after uh, yeah, Josh totally. and, and see if we can do like maybe one more session focused Perfect. on on that. Awesome. Um, so if there is there any more questions, we're going to wrap up. It's 1227. Um, I think that that was great. Our next session is browsers to buyers. So that might also be a little more in depth on on that end of it. Um, again, I will go ahead and send out the recording to this session, and I'll include the last session as well, so you'll have them, um, and we look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 11.30. Um, Jazz and I will talk about what that looks like in terms of maybe a, a, another session that's for advanced Shopify users, but don't forget, you can reach out to support. They will walk you through some of this stuff that pertains, like Jazz said, to your site, there is also that 60 minute um, free session that you get. And so that should help you, you guys out as well. So Absolutely. thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great, a great rest of your day and we'll see you next Thursday. Take care everyone, thanks for joining. Bye.